This is the Sales Gravy Podcast. I'm Jeb Blunt, best-selling author of Fanatical Prospecting and Sales EQ, and I'm here to help you open more doors, close bigger deals, and rock your commission check. On this episode, I sit down with Chris Beal, and we have a conversation about the invisible stranger. This is the person on the other end of the line that salespeople have so much fear of and have such a hard time having a conversation with. You're going to love this episode. I also want you to go download our free ebook, 25 Sales Hacks That Will Make You More Money Now, at free.salesgravy.com forward slash hacks. This fantastic ebook is packed full of tips and techniques from 25 of the world's top authors and thought leaders. Go to free.salesgravy.com forward slash hacks. That's free.salesgravy.com forward slash hacks to download your free ebook now. Now, here's my interview with the amazing Chris Beal, CEO of Connect and Sell. Welcome to another episode of Sales Masters. My name is Jeb Blunt. I'm the CEO and founder of Sales Gravy. Today, I have Chris Bill, who is the CEO of Connect and Sell, one of my favorite sales tools. In fact, Connect and Sell is my personal secret weapon for having more conversations. And I'm really happy to have Chris on because Chris and I have had so many conversations just impromptu at conferences and on the telephone together, and they're all amazing. And so the very, for the very first time, I've convinced him to hop on camera with me so we can record record some of this beautiful advice that he gives out. So, Chris, welcome to Sales Masters. Oh, thanks, Jeb. Great to be here. Chris, one of the, the, the subjects that is on a lot of people's minds these days, in fact, uh, Alex Goldfain and I recently did a video on, on this very subject of how very little time salespeople are actually having conversations with their customers. And Alex said selling is, is talking to humans. That's what we do. We talk to humans. And shockingly, not a lot of salespeople are spending time talking to humans. I know this is something that drives you crazy because you talk about it all the time. Well, I, I think it's it's kind of funny. It crept up on on us, I think. You know, I've been around for a while. I've been building companies, which means selling, regardless of what else you think when you build a company. It's primarily a sales job, even if you're the, you know, the chief technology officer, for not quite 40 years now. And so I've gotten to see the evolution of sales. I wrote an article about this called Whatever Happened to Sales?, it's in 10 parts, so nobody reads it because it's too long and it's very boring. But the thesis is pretty simple. Um, when you talk to people, there's only two flavors of people. People that are next to you, <laughs> and you can talk to them like you could talk to them 10,000 years ago, and people who are far away. And those are people we talk to through something we generally call a telephone. And the telephone got wiped out as a practical instrument of sales in about 2003, 2004, when the cost of storage for voicemail plummeted and companies opened up their voicemail systems to outside calls. Before that, remember back in the 90s, you had voicemail systems from VMX and Octel and guys like that. And the storage was so expensive that you would never let somebody from the outside without a secret code call in and leave a voice message for someone in your company. Well, around 2002, 2003, that changed. And then the next thing that changed is voicemail turned into spam. And the next thing that changed is people stopped listening to it. And it went down precipitously. So it left the poor salespeople without the fundamental tool of sales, which is let's talk to somebody that we're not physically standing next to. I mean, really, the math is literally as simple as that, is it became very, very hard physically, time-wise, to get a conversation with somebody. And nowadays, we've gotten to the point where salespeople, in general, are happy to have four conversations a day, unscheduled conversations. The scheduled ones are nice. you got to have those. But four unscheduled conversations a day with what I call invisible strangers. And uh, that means they work for four minutes a day. And it's kind of hard to accomplish very much when you work for four minutes a day. Uh, you're absolutely right. And that, I think, is... You know, I address this a little bit in my book, Sells EQ, but the essence of selling is the human connection. I mean, the emotional experience that a buyer has going through the process with the seller is the greatest predictor of outcome of, of any other variable. But if you're only spending four minutes having conversations, it's almost impossible 
to, to leverage the emotional experience. And I've always believed that the telephone is the greatest sales tool. I mean, back in the 90s, when I was an outside salesperson in the field, going out and meeting with people, my entire world was predicated on setting a couple of really good scheduled appointments every single day because impromptu conversations were worthless to me. Uh, so mostly what I was doing was calling, setting appointments, and I was leveraging the phone to, to get face-to-face with people. The cool thing today is that people are much more comfortable with having conversations on the phone. I I bought a $25,000 piece of software the other day ago on the telephone. I didn't, I didn't go meet with them. I didn't have a conversation beyond a couple of demos and I felt comfortable buying that. So we have the ability now to, to sell and interact with people in a different way, but there's this invisible barrier that seems to be between salespeople and their client. And whether it's the phone system or it's our own attitude, it's keeping us from having more conversations. What I see, and this is just my opinion, is that yes, there are some technical difficulties. Yes, there are some amazing tools like Connect and Sell, your company, that make it easy to have conversations and skip back you know, past all the BS that you have to deal so you can have real conversations. But I find a lot of it is just that we have almost a new generation of people that that sort of put put other human beings at arm's length and aren't even comfortable having the conversation. And I'm 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 wondering because you I mean I mean you go everywhere like you're talking to companies from all over. If you're having the same experience, or maybe I'm just on an island and it's an opinion. People have never really, in general, been very comfortable talking to invisible strangers. I was very phone phobic. It was fact probably my only business phobia that I brought into the business world when I joined NCR in 1979. I would do anything. I'd walk up to a stranger. I walked up to a guy once who was looking at a building and determined he was the owner of the restaurant and had a job working for him within three minutes out in the desert. Right? So I don't have a problem with meeting people and talking to people. But talking to invisible strangers, you know, that was not my favorite thing. And I had to overcome that in 1979. The difference was it was easy to get invisible strangers on the phone back then. It really was. You'd call them, and about one in three or four times, you'd get the person you wanted. It just wasn't that bad. It might take 10 minutes, uh, but it didn't take an hour or two hours. So what what I'm finding is we have young people that are being characterized as kind of anti-conversation or uh, anti-human interaction. You know, they want to interact through text, and they're called millennials or whatever they happen to be. And they do have a preferred way of of working with each other. That's true. But man, when you give them conversations, what you find is what you've always found. There's a subset of the population at all times that have certain kinds of skills. Some people are built to talk and listen. Some people are built to go heads down in a spreadsheet. Some people are built to write lyrical poetry. That's just people are just different from each other. And we have in this millennial generation and, and the next one coming along, we have a failure to sample. We're asking them to buck up, be brave, work hard, call all day long, and then talk to four people. And it's kind of weird when you think about it. It's like, I want you to work your butt off all day doing something that all your peers think is idiotic. And by the way, it will give, get you four minutes of productivity, four minutes of work. It's, just, it's, it's a strange, vicious cycle. I, I love what you said. I want to back up and you, you, know, you talked about the invisible stranger. Because it's, it is something that baffles me personally. Because uh, I, I, I was three weeks ago, I was in Las Vegas with a, a group of insurance agents and we were doing, financial, doing a financial prospecting boot camp. And in our boot camps, we do live phone blocks. And these are business to business insurance reps. So they're calling into businesses, setting appointments, going out and spending some time with the business owner, learning about their business, doing a presentation and hopefully closing the deal. This group was an, an insistent that driving around their car and knocking on doors was a better way to accomplish that, that, that people wouldn't have a conversation on the telephone. And until you just said that, because I, I didn't connect the dots, because for me, like, like going to someone's business and having them kick me out, because that's what, what's basically happening. I mean, they're, they're interrupting these, these business owners day and the owner saying, get the hell out of my, my business, C- come back another time. To me, that's way worse rejection than someone on the phone just hanging up on me and saying, I don't want to talk to you. But for them, the, the invisible stranger was way more, was way harder for them. Now, part of the, 
that was. They just didn't know how to initiate the conversation. No one had taught them. It was easier in person to see the person's eyes and to respond to their expression. And we know that you know 80% of human communication is visual. So once they learned how to, to, to have a conversation on the phone, to learn a framework for that, they become, became much more confident about it. And it turns out that during that particular fanatical prospecting boot camp, we had a 57% contact rate. They were floored at how many people were answering their telephones. A part of that is we're calling smaller businesses. Most small businesses, the phone system is this now, right? So they're attached to the phone. Uh, also, by the way, on voicemail, it comes in as a text message now. So when I get a voicemail, it's, it's transcribed. And once we taught them, and this was a room full of millennials, how to have the conversation, they were better. And you're exactly right. Uh, once, you, once you teach people to have a conversation and you make it okay, they get better at it. Now, I want to talk about Connect and Sell for a second because there's something that you guys do that is unique in this particular space. Let's just say you're a millennial and you're, you're, you're already nervous about the invisible stranger and you already don't really have the frameworks for having conversations. I do believe in the 1979 and 1980s, 1990s, that our companies did a lot better job of preparing us for the structure of a conversation. But if four minutes a day, four times a day, you have a one minute conversation with someone who totally rejects you and that's your entire experience, it gets really hard to hone the skills of having conversations. You guys have, have turned prospecting kind of on its head because what you've done is taken away all of the noise in between the conversations, move that out of the way so that the sales reps get more opportunities to actually engage with another human being. Can you tell me how you guys do that? Because this is a, it's a, it's a really cool process. Well, from the user perspective, uh, it's real simple. I mean, you think about how do you call an Uber? I, almost anybody can learn to do that, even though a lot of people can't learn how to hail a cab in New York City. They would eventually have to walk. Uh, you know, if you came from some, some other part of the country and your job was to get a cab to stop for you, you will end up walking. That's all there is to it. And so, you know, how do you use Uber? Well, you push a button. It knows where you are. You told it where you want to go. And a, cab, a, a car shows up. And that's the same as Connect and Sell. You tell it where you want to go. That's your list. You tell it when you want to go there, now, you know, and you push a button and you wait. And the waiting is the hard part because salespeople hate to wait. There's a, I hate to say it, but there's more than a little, uh, shall we say, sort of ADD out there in the sales world than there is in most other professions. I actually think it's one of the things that makes salespeople great is that they're, they're actually paying attention to a lot of stuff. More like a, a dog that's good at herding sheep rather than one that's good at lying on the porch, right? So you get that like, look, 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 and that's good in sales, but it does make them a little impatient. But we get it down to a point of, you know, three or four minutes where it's kind of okay. You can push that button, you can wait, and then boom, you're talking to somebody. A little tone in your ear, bloop, and there's a little pop on the screen, actually quite a big one, always shows up in the same place and shows you on the screen in big colorful letters, different sizes. So you can kind of see what's the name, what's the title, what's the person's uh, reason or the, the reason you have for wanting to talk to them is all right there on the screen. Now you got to get over the fact that you just got them to pick up the phone, but you didn't know who it was going to be except they're on your list. And so you've got to get used to what we call talking on the beat. Uh, a lot of people, when they use connect and sell, they'll start reading what's on the screen you know why they don't let you use texting while you're driving? It's not because your eyes are off the, the, the road. It's because you lose track of time when you're reading. And when you lose track of time, you run into stuff, right? So you lose track of time if you're reading that card. You have to learn how to talk on the beat. You know, hi, this is Chris from Connect and Sell. Hey, Jeb, I know I'm an interruption. Can I have 27 seconds to tell you why I called? That works. Now, does that sound like anything else? Sure it does. But notice I didn't say your name until about two and a half seconds in when I had a chance to read it. So there's a skill that you have to learn, but literally all you're doing is pushing a button and talking to somebody. What it lets you do is talk to 30 or 40 people a day or to talk to three people in the eight minutes that you have between meetings or whatever it happens to be. And if four people is the average for a day, and it is, if you could talk to three in eight minutes, 10 minutes, 12 minutes, well, you just cram three quarters of a day into a piece of, of your day you would have let go by anyway. And by having that many conversations, like anything else, the more reps you get, the better you get at it. And that's what I love about what you guys do and the velocity of getting people 
on more conversations and away from the busy work in between. And it just works. This is Jeb Blunt with Sales Gravy. And I want to thank Chris Bill for joining me on Sales Masters today. If you want to learn more about Connect and Sell and Chris, go to connectandsell.com. That's connectandsell.com and check it out. If you are a leader, you want to get with them and schedule a free trial. If you work for a company as a sales rep, this is the coolest thing you've ever used in your life because you skip past all the BS and you jump right into conversation. So go to your boss, go to your owner, go to the executives and tell them, go to Connect and Sell and schedule a free trial for your company. I hope you enjoyed the episode and we'll take a few minutes this week to connect with me on LinkedIn, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and Twitter. And don't forget to go download your free ebook, 25 Sales Hacks, at free.salesgravy.com forward slash hacks. That's free.salesgravy.com forward slash hacks.